do this. Sure. Well, it's loading. Hold on. <laughs> You need a new card. No, I'm good. I got it. All right. Okay. Ready? All set. Good afternoon. I am State Representative Noreen Hammond of Macomb. I am the Republican spokesperson for Higher Education Committee. Um, we are here today to unequivocally state that we need a comprehensive solution for both the FY16 and the FY17 budgets. Piecemeal bri bridges are no longer adequate for the problems that are facing our institutions of higher education, our correctional institutions, and our state social service agencies. Now is the time to bring to light the options that we have all been discussing in our bipartisan, bicameral working group and work towards a compromise solution. Compromise means that no one gets everything they want yeah. and everyone agrees to elements that they do not prefer. The clock is ticking and I join my colleagues in expressing our disappointment in the comments of the speaker and urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and both chambers to continue our bipartisan efforts towards a compromise and a balanced budget. I see a genuine willingness on behalf of the rank and file members from both parties to resolve this impasse. I urge them to pressure their leaders to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And um, I'm Patty Bellock. I'm the state rep from the 47th district. And I'm the uh, deputy minority leader and also the budgeteer for our caucus. I also serve as the uh, minority chair of the Human Service Committee and the Human Service Appropriate Committee. So I've been actively involved for the last several months in the budget issues, but especially in the committees that were formed, um, you know, of the Senate. I mean of the House Democrats and Republicans in working on the budget a comprehensive balanced budget and I'm telling you especially as speaking for the human service people that we work with every day we are trying to get a budget you know we passed the short term we are trying to make sure that the people in the state of Illinois get a balanced budget and that we are able to pay for the most fragile population in the state of Illinois I'm concerned about the speaker. I hope that he will acknowledge how successful these groups have been in working together. I've been here a long time, and I've only seen that really one other time before when we worked on the SMART Act, where we worked for four months together. And in this case, we have been working together in good faith with everybody participating, not just sitting around a table, but everybody participating in the discussion. We need to see the progress through to the completion in the form of a budget compromise negotiated and agreed to by both sides. I really feel again that there is a commitment by both sides to continue these working groups, not just saying that as uh, you know, something to say today, but we've spent a lot of time and effort, a couple of weeks, you know, a couple of hours each day in working together and respecting other people's opinions and everybody doesn't agree on everything but especially in the budget working group we made a framework that we all thought we could send to the leaders and see what they would give back to this so especially from the human service perspective now is the time to come to get together and really put the people of Illinois first we need to protect the children the families and the seniors who are the ones who are being hurt the most by the state not having a budget Several calls come into my office every day by seniors, um, families, um, people with disabilities from of the universities. This is um, something I've never seen before in the whole time that I've been in office. And we're just my message is is that this can work, and we need to um, move forward all together to put this state back on a strong fiscal footing. And the only way that we're going to do that is to work together, both, Sen both Democrats and Republicans, Senate and House, and move forward with these working groups to come to a solution within the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patty. Uh, I'm Representative Dan Brady, a minority spokesman 
uh, on the Higher Education Appropriations Committee. Uh, I've been involved in, in carrying procurement legislation for the governor, uh, something that's, that's, that's real tangible legislation uh, that would help. Uh, and when it costs, comes to cost containment, uh, I've also been part, as with my colleagues in particular, uh, Representative Ron Sandick, who's here, of being part of a committee work group that is diligently trying with Republicans and Democrats to work on things such as collective bargaining, workers' comp, school mandates and government consolidation, pensions, property tax freeze. Now, the governor's office knows he's not going to get all of those things that he wants the way he wants. But what we're trying to do is compromise. And I think that is extremely important, as all my colleagues will say on both sides of the aisle, is the compromise. It can be done. We've done it in a stopgap measure for higher education funding. We've done it in a stopgap measure for human services funding. We've come together, the rank and file. Um, many will say they're disappointed in the speaker's latest comments about these working groups. Uh, I'm not surprised. The speaker wants to be convinced that we can do this in a bipartisan fashion, that we, the rank and file legislators, will say no more, will come together and do it on behalf of the people of the state of Illinois. The state's in turmoil. We can pull out of this turmoil by working together. Let these committees continue to work. The administration has moved off of many of its demands since they first started, and I think they are being reasonable, and other Democrats have become in these committees reasonable and want to continue to do one thing, continue to communicate, discuss, and have open dialogue with each, each other. As elected representatives, I don't think that's too much to ask whoever your leader is. That's what we're going to continue to do in a bipartisan fashion and bring this to a resolution. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Tom Demmer from Dixon. I'm a member of the Appropriations Committees for Human Services, uh, K-12 Education, and this year at least the Higher Education uh, Appropriations too. I was also a member of the bipartisan working group that was formed around the budget. Uh, when those bipartisan working groups were put together, it was one of the most encouraging signs I think we've seen all year. After more than a year of impasse, uh, we finally saw some movement happening from rank and file legislators. So I think all of my colleagues would agree that we found those meetings to be productive, to be candid, um, to be bipartisan, and to be working in, in good faith. So I was uh, surprised this morning to hear that the speaker had categorized those as unproductive meetings. Uh, at a time when we have impasse for more than a year and much of that impasse being centered at the leadership level, I think one of the most productive things we could do is for rank and file legislators to sit down and talk. Uh, I can't imagine how that would be seen as being unproductive. I was also surprised to see this morning when uh, there's been a lot of talk around a spending plan, I think, a, it might be being called a budget right now, that spends $7 billion more uh, than the revenue estimate is for next year. The reason I'm surprised by that is because it bears little to no resemblance to the plans that we talked about in working group meetings. And I'd be surprised to find any of my Democratic colleagues agreeing uh, to, to a budget that is so far out of balance. Uh, many of the conversations that we've had in the working groups, we've been a lot closer on issues. Um, there have been a lot more things that we've at least acknowledged um, each other's points in, and we've, we've been able to come to a closer agreement than that. So uh, today we saw a couple of signs that I think didn't, uh, didn't mesh with what we've seen over the past several weeks. I think the course that we've been following with bipartisan working groups is the right one. It's the one that brought us to a solution in higher education appropriations. It's the one that brought us to a solution in uh, human service appropriations. And it's the one I think that we can build on that momentum with um, if we want to get a comprehensive budget for FY16 and FY17. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Ron Sandak. I'm the state representative from the 81st. Uh, following up on the comments of my good colleagues, I, as Dan Brady said, I'm one of two members from the House Republican Caucus meeting regularly with uh, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and both uh, chambers trying to come to a compromised, negotiated solution with respect to some of the items the governor has called for, uh, co uh, colloquially called the turnaround agenda. These are items made in good faith. These are discussions we're having in good faith. And I wanted just to give you a few moments of my reaction to our involvement. In each and every instance, we have had meaningful, substantive discussions, professional, collegial, and progress has been made. Um, it is not a show trial. It is not something that's a facade. Each and every person has demonstrated their genuineness and 
has been bringing solutions, potential options, and a spirit of compromise to each and every discussion. So like my colleagues, I was somewhat distressed, but I guess not surprised that today, Speaker Madigan has categorized these conversations as unproductive or unpersuasive. I can tell you he wasn't there, and I can tell you he's categorically misinformed. In each instance, they've been productive, and in each instance, they've been persuasive. And to stop them now or throw cold water on them now and drop a budget, I'm told, although I've not seen it, that is completely different from what the rank and file, bipartisan, bicameral working groups have put together seems to me to be a deliberate and very uh, coordinated effort to derail the bipartisan rank and file process, which is unfortunate. I am hoping my colleagues, uh, the folks that have participated and the folks I have spoken to on the other side of the aisle, whether they're in the Senate or the House, that have seen and know that good steps have been taken, that rank and file members have finally activated and talked to each other. I'm hoping they're not going to be dissuaded from continuing down that path because to divert off it would be a monumental mistake, the consequences of which pretty hard to imagine. They do not get better. Our state does not advance. No part of what we're doing gets better by derailing that process. So I am pleading with my colleagues to stay to it, to stay connected, and to engage with us in a continuing process. We've got little time, but we ought to be using it productively. And I and my colleagues remain committed to meeting with anybody, anytime, to get a deal done. We're happy to answer any questions. You guys are, are have, have all sort of referenced previous compromises that you've reached on higher ed funding and on social services funding, but the social services bill that you all voted for is still sitting on the governor's desk, he hasn't signed it. So how, like, what do you get out of compromising with each other if this stuff goes to the governor and it just sits there? Well, I don't think that he's under any uh, I, here, he can sign it today, tomorrow, and I think sure. there's plenty of time. We've done our part in the legislative with the, process. With the social service agencies that are waiting for that money say that there's plenty of time? I, I suspect not, but that, that is something above and beyond the ken of what we can do. As legislators, we pass or defeat legislation. Right now, we're focused on trying to pass bipartisan, compromised, fully negotiated, budget and reform legislation that turns the state around. That's what we're focused on. How close are you guys to coming up with bipartisan agreement on turnaround agenda items? I know I spoke to you and to Representative Brady after one of the uh, working groups on workers' comp. Right. And you guys didn't have a lot to say. Well, that's still, because there's, look, at there's varying degrees of ease and sophistication. Um, I think we've made progress on several items that probably, again, they're not completely agreed upon, but they're structured framework that we put aside. And then workers' comp is far more challenging, and we're still working, and we have a meeting tonight. Um, its stakeholders will be there, so we're committed, and I know my colleagues on the other side of the table are committed to continue to work. Ron, I'm having a case of deja vu. I mean, this seems a lot like last year where we're near the end of the calendar. and a lot left to do. Doesn't seem like we're any closer than we were 12, 16 months ago. Um, summer's around the corner. You're a Sox fan. The speaker's a Sox fan. Is there any chance? I'll take him to a ball game if he if, if he if he lets this process ensue. I will take him to a ball game, buy him a beer and a hot dog. It does seem like that's the one thing you guys do agree on. Consider that, that offer made. And we'll bring. That family member of the Comiskey's along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, look, it's deja vu to an extent, but there's one clear departure point. All of us have been working with our colleagues rank and file. That is a nuance that I don't think we can overstate. We, finally, it's bubbling up, and I'm hoping my Democratic counterparts will not take the path of least resistance and follow the leader, and will instead say, you know what? We see progress. It's palpable. Let's let it run its course. No, to, to, your question, to your question, let me, let me follow yeah. up on that. Sure. Straight, straight to the point of that. Uh, it is uh, exactly last year. Let's don't repeat that mistake. Let's don't let history repeat itself in the state of Illinois. Mr. Speaker, work with us in a bipartisan fashion. Let's don't commit the mistakes we did last year. Governor, you're working with us. Speaker, continue to allow these groups to discuss, to come together in a bipartisan fashion. Because what can be different this year is what's getting in place is a budget framework of spending 
in a framework of turnaround agenda, of items. Not going to be everything everybody wants, but we have those that have worked so hard and are at a point where they can live with revenue, even though they may not believe totally and want more, or those who are where we're at with cuts, who believe we should have more, but are willing to go to this level right here. Both those are balanced from the standpoint that we can do this. We've got a framework for budget, for spending, and we have a framework for cuts, and we've got a framework getting in place for some turnaround agenda. It's not going to be everything for all people, but that's a sign of a good bill when somebody doesn't get totally everything they want. I'd like to comment. I'd just like to comment on that also because, yes, there are certain similarities from last year, but nothing like what we've all just talked about now. There was not the work of all the legislators, both sides of the aisle, both in the Senate and the House. And I can tell you, just speaking from the perspective of a Human Service Committee member, the people of the Human Service Committee members and Human Service Probe are kind of a different breed of people because they don't care whether they're, political, they're Republican or Democrat because they're really focused on just the people in the state of Illinois. And they want a change, both sides of the aisle, because people People are hurting. People are suffering. Sexual assault centers are going out of business. Lutheran Social Services has already cut. Catholic Charities is about to cut. I mean, they've all been in our offices. This is real. This is a crisis. And human service providers are just desperate. And those of us that are on those committees, whether you be Republican or Democrat, we care and we want a solution to this budget right now. This goes Can back you? to my earlier question, though. I was going to comment on that because the bill that did come over, remember we separated it that morning, the bill that did come over was not the identical bill that had passed in the Senate. And so there was some things that were added to that, even though they were not GRF, of which we cannot spend the GRF. But I think that they're just analyzing that bill. We really, literally, only had an hour to analyze that bill with our budget staff before we um, took that bill. So I would say we all supported it, but there was you know, not a lot of time to review that, but we did not want to let that go by during that time period. So I'm not concerned about that, but I do feel it needed more review than what we had. They had had about five days ahead of time to review that bill over in the Senate. Whoever Senator wants Riley. to answer, uh, it seems to me that we're in a tug of war between the governor and the speaker. Is, and as you just laid out, Patty, there's any number of institutions that are on the verge of collapse. Is there enough growing anger among the rank and file of both parties to say, forget the leadership, let's just do a budget and, and vote, irrespective of what their party leaders want? I guess I would, I, I would first um, say that, that um, not so much anger as frustration. Um, I think that members on both sides of the aisle are extremely frustrated that uh, the process has not been allowed to continue. Um, comments from that, that the speaker made this morning are um, not at all productive. Um, those of us standing here and, and many, many of our colleagues uh, that have been participating in these working groups, it, it was our understanding and, and certainly um, I think that our leaders uh, thought that it was the understanding of the speaker and the governor and, and all of the leaders that in our working groups we weren't going to um, absolutely present an absolute solution. We were charged with presenting a framework. Um, that is exactly what our group did. We, we did not have all of the I's dotted and all of the T's crossed because it was our intention to present a framework to the leaders and the governor, take their input, and then come back as a group and meet again and take their, their comments into consideration. When the comments are, I don't think the group is productive, where does that get us? So I think it's were, frustration. A lot uh, of people were commenting that the speaker doesn't want to deal before the election. And I'm more to the point, irrespective of the working groups, at what point, and maybe it doesn't happen, but are we getting to the point where 
people are just going to basically vote as independent members of the so. yeah, House so. and say, sure, so. let's, yeah. let's do a budget deal and we don't really care what the leadership Sure. Is. I, I, I would, would uh, certainly hope that that would be the case. Um, we have um, institutions of, of higher education that can't wait till November. They won't be there in November. They've been given a Band-Aid till the end of July, the first part of August. They need help immediately. Our social service agencies, Representative Bellock, lined that out perfectly. They can't wait. We have got to get this resolved. And, we've, and it's incumbent upon us to do it while we are all here and we can work together in a bipartisan, bicameral manner. I just want to add to that. I think not only is there frustration that's shared among rank and file members, there's also hope and commitment shared among rank and file members. We don't see rank and file members throwing cold water on the negotiations. We don't see rank and file members walking away from negotiations. If you ask members of, on the Republican side and the Democratic side, do you believe we can come to a compromise? Do you believe that an agreement is reachable? You hear a lot of people say, yes, they do believe that. We're not seeing mixed messages from rank and file legislators. We're seeing everybody pulling in the direction that we can negotiate these things and we can come up with a, with a compromise. So if you want to get a true flavor of the legislature, talk to members on both sides of the aisle and don't just hear what the, the kind of one line um, response is from a leader. One more comment for me on this. I think my colleagues have been um, full in scope. If, if the speaker is going to continue down the path he's shown today, which I think is discouraging, I would respectfully ask that he pull back and let this process move ahead. But if we're going to get a bill tomorrow on a budget, that's unlike what's been worked out in a bipartisan fashion from rank and file. If we're not going to see reform ideas percolate to the top for a vote, I'm hoping my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will push back respectfully. I'm hoping they'll hold their leadership accountable and have a voice. I hope they'll find their voice and work with us so that we get the real budget bill and the real reform initiatives to the floor for real vetting in a transparent way so that people can finally have some trust and confidence in their legislature and hopefully the governor as well. To me, we're at a crisis point not only financially with human service providers, with infrastructure, education, public safety, and the entirety of state government, but we have a trust and confidence problem with the people of Illinois too, and we owe it to them. Wherever you are in this state, we owe it to them to show good faith and confidence and to provide some semblance of hope for them. That means we have to work. That means everyone has a duty to act in good faith. And if it means pushing back politely on the speaker or any other leader that's an impediment, so be it. It's our time for leadership. I'm hoping we're going to use this time well. Got it?